from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Uh, my name is John Kelly. I'm a columnist at the Washington Post, and the Washington Post is a charter sponsor of the Library of Congress National Book Festival. We want to thank the co-chairman of the festival, David Rubenstein, and the many National Book Festival sponsors who made this event possible. And you can be like David Rubenstein and support the festival with a donation. Information is in the program. Uh, after uh, our guests speak, there will be a Q&A, and it will be filmed for the uh, archives and could appear on a later broadcast. So if you've always wanted to be in the collection of the Library of Congress uh, without having to write a book, here's your chance. It may be rude to talk about people when they're not around, but this morning we have no choice. Unfortunately, there's been a, a Kwame Alexander has had a family emergency, so he can't be here, but let's talk about him anyway. Uh, Kwame was born in Brooklyn and raised there and in Chesapeake, Virginia, in a house where he said, books were on shelves on every wall in every room. My parents forced us to read every day. Then we could do other things. It sounds like the other thing that Kwame did mainly was write books. He has written uh, 24 books, uh, which is more books than a lot of people read. Uh, they include the picture books Animal Ark, Out of Wonder, and Surf's Up, the novels Booked, and He Said, She Said, and the playbook, 52 Rules to Help You Aim, Shoot, and Score in This Game of Life. His novel in verse, The Crossover, won the 2015 Newbery Medal and the Coretta Scott King Award. Uh, Kwame serves as the president of Book in a Day, a literacy nonprofit that inspires youth um, in the writing and publishing process. And he recently led a delegation of 20 writers and activists uh, to Ghana, where they delivered books and worked on literacy projects. And I think that may have inspired part of uh, the book that we're going to feature this morning. Uh, and that book is uh, Solo. It's about Blade Morrison, the 17-year-old son of a washed-up rock musician. I imagine a cross between Ozzy Osbourne and Steven Tyler and Lenny Kravitz um, trying to find his place in the world. A solo, of course, is that part of a song where the lead guitarist wails away and it's also what a pilot has to do to prove that she knows how to fly. I think Kwame uh, and Mary mean both senses of the word. It's a moving book, and it's a funny book, too. Solo is actually a duet. Kwame wrote it with Mary Rand Hess, an author, poet, and editor who, like Kwame, lives in Northern Virginia. She is the author of the picture books The Cowpoke Adventures of Slim and Haskell and The Day I Met the Nuts. She's a co-writer of Animal Ark, celebrating our wild world in poetry and pictures, a book of animal photography and poetry. Um, she grew up thinking that she would be a rock star in the uh, sort of Pat Benatar mold. Well, we already have a Pat Benatar, so we don't need another one. Instead, we have uh, Mary Rand Hess, a graduate from George Mason University with a degree in English uh, who wrote this book with Kwame. Finally, seeing uh, a guitar on stage is like seeing a gun on the wall in a checkoff play. And we are fortunate, it's going to get played, we are fortunate to have guitarist Randy Preston with us this morning. He has known Kwame Alexander for 25 years when Kwame produced a play uh, that Randy was in, The Weight of Being Black, by Glenn Allen. Uh, and uh, Randy said, I remember Kwame selling his books out of his car. And uh, they lost touch, and then he heard Kwame being interviewed on NPR and uh, knew that he had made it. Uh, Randy is a former English teacher uh, in Washington, D.C., and if you listen to the audiobook of Solo, you will hear uh, the songs that Randy wrote for the characters in there. So please join me in uh, welcoming Mary Rand Hess and Randy Preston. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, obviously, we're missing uh, Kwame, and um, we wish him and his family well, and we're praying for them. 
and we're going to um, carry on in the spirit of Solo and um, in Kwame's honor today. And um, let's begin. So when I decided to um, write this book, and Kwame decided to write this book, we brainstormed together, and the music that inspired us throughout our childhood and adulthood played a big part. Um, we're big rock fans, as is Randy. And Randy wrote the awesome music that Blade writes in this book and composed the, the songs that you're going to hear today. Um, so we're very excited to share that. But I wanted to start with Blade. Um, Blade's journey is a journey of self-discovery. But it starts in a rough spot. You know, he doesn't know where he quite fits in and where he belongs because his father is a washed up rock star and an addict and his mother is dead. There's this dream I've been having about my mother that scares the holy night out of me. And each time I wake from it, I'm afraid to open my eyes and face the world that awaits, the fractured world that used to make sense but now seems disjointed, islands of possibility that float by like a thousand puzzle pieces that just don't fit together anymore. So I think of chapel and I grab hold of the only other thing that matters, my guitar. So he's grown up under the spotlight and the press has hounded him and he's had to you know, endure a lot of his father's antics and show up to a lot of his shows. The show. My father, Rutherford Morrison, can't stand to be away from the stage. He has always craved the spotlight, needs it like a drug. Posing, posturing, profiling before millions, an electric prophet, or so he thinks. Capturing concert whispers in the vapors of his breath, as if his voice was preparing them for rapture. My sister and I have always lived under the stage, beside it, behind it. I think he feels, right now, he puts his hope in his one saving grace, his guitar and his girlfriend. He thinks that chapel will kind of save him. Those eyes will be the death of me. My gravestone will read, here lies a young man who died inside the gaze of a woman. I watch the river and her eyes gallop forth fall into them, dive into them. She smiles, those eyes, I can't escape the depth of them. The song has ended, but the melody still sings. From her mouth, I can hear a word, I can't hear a word. I'm lost in those two comets that move across my universe. I remember the first time she looked at me, like this. Just a little blown away Cause your eyes Oh my My, my, my Excuse me Didn't quite get that Are you talking to me? Oh, I just gotta get my breath Cause your eyes, they mesmerizing Your eyes, they're hypnotizing Your eyes are deeper blue than the deepest part of the deep, deep blue sea So Blade has his guitar and he has his memories of his mother and, of course, chapel. The bridge, 
Rutherford gave it to me in grand fashion on a black velvet bench for my 13th birthday, a cushion, a custom built Eddie Van Halen Frankenstrat made of body, ash, neck, maple, with pickups tweaked by EVH himself. Legend has it that Eddie was gonna give it to some king in Africa or something, but my dad convinced him to gift it to me. And that's real cool, I get it. But what mattered to me was that when I strummed, it sounded like mom laughing. So I named her Sunny after my mother. And there hasn't been a day, no matter how crazy or wicked or cruel, that I haven't held her knowing it's the bridge that connects between heaven and earth. So that guitar, as you can see, really kind of helps him gather his emotions. Um, but there's, there's problems that are brewing. It seems that um, Blade, our chapel's father, really doesn't like him. Um, and he's going to have to find a way. The sky beams as I search for comfort. She wraps her arms around my waist. We hug so tight, the Milky Way spins on our axis. Our kiss could save a planet. This is where I wanna be. This is where I need to be. Swaying softly together toward the stars until an earthquake. Thunders towards us with an angry anger so fierce It'd make 10,000 horses fall and never get up. Chapel's father is a 6.5 on the Richter. He stomps up to me in an ominous black robe and practically moves the ground beneath us. This is it, he roars, and he tears us completely apart. Day one, I will never leave this bedroom again. I stare at the walls, the ugly empty space imprisons me. There is nothing left for me if she's gone. A bare unspoken language that has no words, no gestures, a song of sinking silence. I've texted her 13 times. Rain falls down my window Reminding me of you Feel so uneasy You've still got me crying For you I miss you don't want to say it, just want to play it. I miss you, believe me, it's true. I miss you, I don't want to say it, just want to play it. I miss you. I miss you. I imagine she jumps into my arms. We kiss, our lips like two special edition book covers, keeping our secret story safe inside the history book of greatest loves. I tell her I'm leaving. She insists she's going with me and that we're never coming back. We'll compose some deep cuts, flip the script, our B-side, in a place that's just ours. I see the light still on in Chapel's bedroom window. Why am I so nervous? Her parents are at church. I know this because I, I called the church. So who is that laughing around back? I slowly make my way around to the giggling and see her silhouette in the dusk. My girl with Van 
DeWish, tickling each other, and our hammock locking lips. This can't possibly be happening. They hear the fallen branch snap under my feet and look straight at me. The cruel moon decides to make an appearance right now, right over the place where we made out. Saturday, late night, holding him tight, wicked chapel, poison apple. I don't want to cry no more, I'm just going to laugh at all your tears. I'm not going to try no more, I guess I'll write off all these years. While I'm at it, can't forget it, one more question, boo, is it that easy to, to get, get with, with you? you? Monday I said you look fine and I lied. Your hair was frizzy. Okay. Tuesday your breath smells so bad that I cried. My I eyes grew dizzy. dizzy. Wednesday I wondered if you were still mine. Man, I was crazy. Thursday I got you those jeans from Divine. The girl Don't you played me. I don't wanna cry no more. I just wanna laugh at all your tears. I don't wanna try no more. I guess I'll write up all these years. While I'm at it, I can't forget it. One more question, boo. So, Blade, I think he's had it. He's also discovered a family secret. And that's kind of tearing him apart, too. But I don't want to give that away, because you'll have to read the book. <laughs> but he decides he's leaving LA. I won't miss the Hollywood Hills, the palm trees, the fake city and its manufactured lights. I won't miss the bloodsuckers, those paparazzi, and the tabloid news, shame because of my name, or even those sunsets over Santa Monica Pier. I won't miss this pain, and that will never leave. I won't miss the music under the trees or the feeling of finding my own safe place to breathe. And now, I won't miss her. So, He's going to leave the jungle, that's what he calls L.A., and he's going to West Africa in a country named Ghana, a beautiful country that he's never been to. So imagine him landing in one of the hottest countries in the world. I would say it's right above the equator. And so um, he gets off and he finds a taxi, and it's, it's a loud country. There's lots of taxi drivers um, honking at him. Um, we just went to Ghana, so we experienced the beauty there and the lively people and all the taxi drivers and the beautiful uh, music. Um, so he gets in a car with a taxi driver who takes him to Congo. That's where he thinks he needs to go. And they end up at a junction. After two hours of winding, crating roll roads in a beat-up Honda with no shock absorbers to absorb the shock of 47 miles of unpaved roads with scattered potholes, the taxi driver finally stops. Conco, he says, and points to a long road on the right of the junction. Thank you, Mr. Easy, I respond. How far of a walk? Not far, maybe four, maybe five minutes, kilometers. So he gets out of the, uh, the car and he has to walk many miles. And when we were in Conco recently, the roads washed out. We were going to um, help out in the village and meet the people of Conco and work with the children. And we were dedicating a, a beautiful library, and they were working with us to get this library done. But there had been rains, and so the road was washed out. Um, and it was not easy getting there, was it? And um, I, I just remember that we bumped around a lot. Randy, what did you think? Uh, you ever sat on the back of the school bus? <laughs> just imagine that amplified by three or four times and relentless, just relentless. It was, it's fun, but the village was gorgeous. 
Wasn't it beautiful? And what did you what did you think of um, Congo? Um, I read the I'd been to Africa before, but never to Ghana. And I read the book before I went, so I was like, "Oh, this is familiar. This looks like the stuff I've seen before." But it was such a beautiful place because the people are comfortable with who they are, and that's not something you find everywhere. They're comfortable in their skin. They're, they're happy to be there. They want you to be a part of what's happening and what's taking place in their village because they think it's cool. And, and that's not something you see a lot in the States. So I enjoyed that part of it. Well, I think when Blade's there, he learns a lot about himself. And I don't want to give too much away. No, don't do but that. I, I, uh, yeah. So you, again, you want to read the book. Yeah. But um, he has a revelation. And this is what... I think is kind of his motto while he's there. We are the sum of moving parts and adjustable hearts. And um, so I'm gonna try to find um, the poem Conco to read to you all if I can grab it. Um, do you have many minutes we have left? I'm just. 14 minutes? 20 minutes, okay. So bear with me as I find Conco. Um, memories fade like grass they say all my memories of you fresh as yesterday if the best years of my life for one hour of your time that gets tricky I'd get greedy and never want to leave your side I need you like a tree needs sun to grow. I need you like a heart needs blood to flow. Can you promise you would care for me? And in all the times I cannot see, I feel your presence here with me always. Here with me always, Mama. Conco is a village of brown and green, apron of Mother Earth, gray, puffy sky, a temperamental sea that swallows, that keeps me looking and laughing to the clouds. Today, I saw a sign near a small lake that read, no drowning. Red and green buckets of water travel miles, suspended in air to glorious rhythms of routine under hidden sun of orange, fiery promises. The smiles here are abundant, a crest of waves across faces, young and old. The fly with wings of kings and queens and search of trees rooted in ancient ground. History with arms that reach and give and give. Crowns of flowers and coconut milk the ambrosia feeding my wandering soul. It's brought the music back to me. Most gatherings are here under the big coconut tree. This place, covered in brilliant sun and humbling moon, captures joy and song and dance of women and men, happy to be singing and alive with sounds that never sleep. Past the magic dust dreams, here I can lift my hands into the sky, pull down the promises into my palms. In other words, this place is beautiful. At this moment, 
I wish you were here When my name is called I love To be embarrassed by your cheeks I'll still march on Holding my head high Because of who you were And how you loved me I know I will survive I know I'm not alone again, and I know I always can depend on the times I hear your laughter on the wind. And you promise to take care of me, and all the times I cannot see, I feel your presence here with me always. Here with me always. Here with me always. Thank you, Randy. That was beautiful. Can you give Randy a round of applause? So I thought um, we'd just give you a little uh, glimpse into Solo. It's, it's a song. It's a, well, it is really a song. That's what it is. It's, it's an epic song of uh, a love letter to rock and roll and to family and to finding yourself. So we're up here now, and we are ready to take any questions if you have questions ask away please do yes um clearly the the poet the poetry in the book i read the whole book as i was writing the songs so um, Kwame said, okay, write a song about this and then make sure Mary likes it. I was like, okay. <laughs> so um, I wrote a song and I think one of the first ones, I, we went through some drafts so then they were like, no, that's not right. It's got to be more epic. So it was definitely informed by the book and by their experiences and then you know, just thought about the, the experiences of the character. You know, what's the character thinking about? Um, the last song I sang, he wrote that for uh, his graduation. Um, you know, and I'm, I was thinking, well, you know, we, we talk, what would a 17-year-old kid think about, you know, what are the highlights of that that we need to pull out? So it was all informed by the, the story. So it was a song he was supposed to sing at his graduation, but didn't get to, but you'll have to read the book again find to find out why. why. We can't so, tell you that. <laughs> but he does get to sing it at some point in the book. Mm -hmm. um, and so Kwame and I, you know, we, we worked on the book together first, like Randy mm -hmm. said, and, and then... He used his brilliance to create the songs, and when he came over with um, the song that he just performed, um, I literally was a mess. I was crying at Kwame's we dining were all room table. We were, we were, were all, all crying. We were like, this is perfect. I think yeah, this, this works. works. <laughs> it was great. It was great. It was great. <laughs> Emotional moment. Yes. Hi. Hi. Since you wrote the book together with Kwame Alexander. What was that process like? Were you guys together, like face to face, or did you do it um, emails, or how did that work? That's writing a, collaboratively. That's a great question. Well, Kwame and I both uh, love collaboration, and um, so we did a lot of. Well, we met in person, but we also did a lot of texting back and forth and emails, and um, he might have written 10 poems and then I've written 10 and then we exchanged them. I mean, literally, I think we, we both touched every poem that was in the book and every corner of the book and every center and, and outside and in between. So we really, um, we both put our hearts in 100%. Um, and he's just so great at knowing when something's working and not working too. <laughs> so I, I could write something and he'd be like, I'm sorry, Rand, but he calls me Rand. We're going to have to take this one out and it's always you know how they always say it's your little darlings so it was hard sometimes we'd have to cut some poems in fact we cut about 200 pages out of the book so you see how thick this book is it was going to be like that we had an editor who was like cut this down so <laughs> any other questions Okay, 
I was wondering about um, the Audible version and if Randy's songs, are you performing, Randy? Yes, ma'am. Uh, so the audio book, um, I think, uh, yeah, uh, we, we just, it's just me and a guitar and, and that's what we did. So um, Kwame's narrating it, which is awesome. He did a really good job of it. Um, and yeah, check it out. Yeah, that Go seems find like it, it would be it. wonderful. It's good. <laughs> In fact, since he couldn't be here today, I recommend if, if, you, if you have a moment to, to grab the audio book, you can hear him read since he wasn't here today and, and, and he's just phenomenal at reading this yeah, he, book and Randy's music to go with it. Yeah, he's an actor, he, he's a performer. He knows how to present things and so when he's presenting them, he tells such a good story. It's really compelling. Go out and get it, it's good. And we might be biased, Two but. Parts. Two points, we're a little biased. <laughs> we're really biased. Anyone else? Hi, um, we were here a couple years ago and saw Mr. Alexander and he was talking about uh, the possibility of a movie for cr the crossover. Um, how, where do you see this book going? That's a really great question. Great it would question. be um, my dream to um, see it on the screen and as a musical, I think it would make a great musical um, with all the music and the, the storyline. So that's a great question. Th that that's we have some things floating some out things there. Some things in the works. Some things in the works. Some interest. Working. So we'll see what happens. Very excited. Um, thank you so much for sharing your talents today. I was wondering about uh, how we could hear more of your music um, besides the audio version. Is there is there other uh, outlets? Yeah, there. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to balance it. Uh, up to about a year and a half ago, I was teaching full time in Washington DC charter school. So um, recently I'm like, oh no, I have to write more music. So I'm doing that. Um, hopefully by the end of, uh, of September, we will have three of the songs from this on iTunes. That's what we're working on now. So keep your ears open for that and that'll be cool. And then, uh, then I'll, be, I'll be doing my own little stuff in between there. So we'll talk about that as well. But thank you for the question. Hi. Um, uh, Excuse my ignorance, but uh, who wrote the poetry in this book? I'm sorry? The poetry. The poetry in the book? Kwame and I wrote the poetry in the book. So all the poems um, okay. that you read in the book are written by Kwame and myself. But the, um, uh, the verbal version of the book will have the live songs that he's yes, singing? Yes, and right. the songs that you hear in the book that are, are written by the character Blade. Oh. Randy here wrote those songs, and there's four songs in in this book okay. that are original. Mu you know, it's original music um, mm -hmm. that he Randy wrote, and it it's on the audiobooks. It's in here. The words are in here, but if you want to hear it live, performed live in a studio, um, I thoroughly enjoyed the songs, and I would like to get the you know the other version of the book that has the songs in it. Thank you very much. I highly recommend it. Thank you. I recommend it as well. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else have a question? Well, thank you so much for being here. And I know Kwame missed being here today and um, Thank you for, for coming to see us and know that he was here in spirit and he appreciates all of you. Um, so have a wonderful time here at the festival and go out and find Solo. Yeah, Thank you. Good. It's good. It's good stuff. Thank you. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.